All right, today we are going to build a coffee table to fill this awkward space in front of our sectional. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa, that was cool. Wait, where's the decorations? I got you. Nice. So today you're going to watch us build this awesome coffee table at a 90 degree angle and we're going to use India ink for the first time. Mm -hmm. That's going to be an adventure. We're not selling this piece. It's ours. So <laughs> I guess technically we bought it from ourselves, but we're going to show you how we would price it if we were selling this to a client. We're going to go over the whole breakdown, show you how many hours it took, what we would charge, that sort of thing. So let's get started. Uh -huh. All right, so we needed a coffee table, just straight up. We have no tables in the house. We don't have an island. Nothing. We don't have, all we have is our editing desks. And that's where we've been <laughs> eating food for the last two weeks now that we've been here. Probably. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna start with a coffee table. That's where we ate most of our meals anyway. If you're anything like us, you probably do too. So a coffee table was kind of the first priority mm -hmm. for us. Pick it up, we're just gonna switch. coffee table that was going to reflect the shape of the sectional. Um, we don't have any other seating in the living room under, other than that sectional and I thought it was kind of weird to just have something like off-centered and to the side and then the person sitting on the long part on the chase like just doesn't get a part of the coffee table I guess. They have to like lean all the way over to set their drinks down. Anyway, to solve that problem we just decided to make it a 90 degree turn in the table. Um, and then I also wanted it kind of the farmhouse modern feel so I wanted like the really straight um, black legs. Initially we were thinking about doing metal, but that probably would have taken us too long. Our welding station isn't set up. We don't have our grinders unpacked quite yet. So we just decided to go with wood and stain it black with India ink. Which turned out awesome by yeah. the way. Like so if you want the matte finish of metal legs, but you don't want to use metal, that India ink is awesome. There's no shine on it. It is completely matte. It looks really, really cool. And we just used cheap poplar for the legs. We went and got an eight quarter piece mm -hmm. of poplar and it milled up really nicely, was really smooth. I did, we did very little sanding once we got it joined together and 
It looks yeah. really, really nice. Yeah, so we definitely wanted a hardwood because it had to support that really heavy um, ash top but we didn't want a super expensive hardwood because we knew we were just gonna stain it black. So poplar was the way to go for us. Another thing that we did that was a first, this is the first time we've used India ink on a project and it was, I don't know, it was really messy. You can see yeah, on the I was table about here. to say the evidence it's, is all right here. It's really messy. It does clean up with water, um, but you kind of have to find something abrasive. Like it came out yeah. of my fingers last night after we got done with it, but I had to scrub with a sponge. Mm -hmm. um, so don't wear your favorite t-shirt while you stand with it. Right. It might, I don't know, it might wash out. I don't know. I wouldn't trust that. You wouldn't so. put it on your precious Bucky t-shirts. No, not on a Bucky <laughs> shirt. Anyway, so that was interesting. Just make sure you're in a clean environment where you can drip or you have paper yeah, or towels down that trippy. will catch your drips. And that's the hard part too, is because you have to use enough of it. Part of this poplar it was really thirsty, but it didn't get into the gaps and crevices. And so we had to use a lot of ink. Mm -hmm. We had to do two coats of it to get it down into the pores. But the second coat did the trick. As soon as we came across with the second coat, it was done, it looked great. Yeah, but you just gotta use a lot of it. So it was relatively fast, it dried yeah. really quickly. So yeah, it we dried way to... faster than if we were, were to paint it. And we just sprayed Endurovar over the mm -hmm. top of it, just a couple coats to get it nice and sealed so that black doesn't rub off over yeah. time. I don't know that it would, but I just wanted to be extra safe. So this week's tip is to make checklists for your commonly used tools. Our goal is to one day hire several employees and we have to train them because we're expecting them to have zero experience in woodworking. We want to train somebody from the mm -hmm. ground up, train them with our methods, our procedures. That way everything that they do is an expected result. And so one of the ways that we did that on this project was we wrote a checklist for the Festool Domino. Mm -hmm. It's the second or third time that we've used it now and it's a really unique tool so it was the perfect candidate for us to learn how to build a checklist for a tool. That way we don't have to spend as much time and effort training them and getting them reps. They can just use the checklist and be done with it. Right, and just like, look, once you've learned it, it's good for little things that you keep forgetting. Like, oh, what do I do after I do this? Ah, yes, that's it. And then you're not having to bother three, four different people with questions because it's all in one document. And I, guys, I am the kind of person, I hate checklists. I hate them so much, but our previous jobs, forced us to use checklists all yeah. the time and we after three or four years we started to see the beauty of having a system right. and a checklist and a process because then when something doesn't get done you can point to it in black and white and say look you were responsible for this checklist this step didn't get done we need to solve the problem. Or when now. you're in a time crunch and there's a bunch of other things going on but you just need to complete this one task you're gonna get it done in, in plenty of time because you have a checklist to turn to that tells you exactly what to do if a thousand other things are going on around you. And if you're curious about what our old jobs were, we discussed that in a podcast this week with 
Brandon. He runs the Make or Break podcast for makers. And it was a really cool show. Super excited yeah, to get that opportunity. He's, like, he's so good. He's great at asking questions. Like, and so It just flowed so well. I know. So anyway, down in the description, you can find the link to his show. Please go check him out and support him. He does yeah. a lot of awesome stuff for the community, hosting that podcast and um, editing a couple others. So that was really cool. But yeah, you can learn more about our past jobs. Just, and, and just us. We just, I don't know. We talk about a lot of stuff. That's good. Anything else? Oh, uh, plans for the coffee table. Yeah. If you want the plans, again, link in the description. Just like last week, if you want it, it's just going to be a page on our website to download it. We just ask that you sign up for our email list. It's not required, but we'd really appreciate it if you did it. So anyway, other than that, I think that's it. We can go ahead and roll the footage of the reveal. What's the matter, Bruce? He doesn't want to play with you? You're gonna have to swing around. So this is our coffee table. It looks really yeah, it nice. Is. Yeah, once we got it in, I think it looks really, really nice. It meshes with the couch, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. So uh, this is our personal coffee table. We're not gonna sell it, mm -hmm. but if we did sell it, I'm gonna put up the pricing structure on what we would yeah. charge to build this. And of course, we don't build things and then sell them. That's the biggest trap I see woodworkers fall into. Mm -hmm. We sell the idea or a sketch of the idea first and then we build it. Yes. So that way you don't have to deal with inventory. You're not throwing something on Facebook Marketplace, just crossing your fingers, hoping someone yeah, will buy it. Yeah, or if you build something and it turns out it's you know not really that much of a hit with people. But if this was the coffee table that our client wanted us to design, this is what we would charge for it. So anyway, yeah, we're super happy with it. Definitely unique, but we were like, we were feeling artsy, so. We went with it. I really like the geometric end of it on this side with yeah, the legs like all the and everything. Squares and stuff. That turned yeah. out really nice. Uh, you will be able to get the plans. Yeah. I think I said that earlier, but that'll be just a link in the description. And yeah, anything else? Uh, not really. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. Video yeah. helps us out a lot. And consider subscribing if you're new. We'd love to share what we know as we're trying to run this woodworking business. But anyway, today was for us, so. <laughs> yes. And Bruce. Yeah. All right, Bruce, you want to say goodbye? Brucey, say goodbye. Don't hurt me. Say bye. That was dumb. We're not putting that in. Okay.